Hi, I'm Mark, and today I will talk about President Joe Biden's visit to Northern Ireland and the issues around it, including Brexit, of course. Joe Biden arrived in Northern Ireland's capital, Belfast, on Tuesday evening and was greeted there by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The U.S. President and First Lady Jill Biden visited Ireland in addition to Northern Ireland and remained on the Emerald Isle to this day. Biden's visit coincides with the 25th anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement. This ended in 1998, the decades-long bloody conflict between the majority Catholic supporters of the Union of Both Parts of Ireland and the predominantly Protestant supporters of the Union of Northern Ireland with Great Britain. The United States played a key role in negotiating the Good Friday Agreement and is considered its guarantor. Biden sees the deal as part of his own political achievements of the 1980s and 90s. The 80-year-old of Irish heritage is proud of his heritage and said before leaving that the priority of his trip would be keeping the peace. And Joe Biden is now in Ireland and traveling in the footsteps of his roots. According to the Irish Family History Center, he is one of the most Irish of all U.S. presidents. Ten of his 16 great-great-grandparents came from the Emerald Isle and emigrated during the Great Famine of the mid-19th century. Upon arrival in Dublin, Biden was greeted by the Irish Prime Minister, the Taoiseach, and then stopped by a nearby fire station, where children greeted him with welcome home signs. During his three-day stay in Ireland, Biden also planned to address Parliament in Dublin, attend a gala dinner and visit County Mayo, where some of his ancestors came from. Despite all the progress, Northern Ireland still struggles with tensions. In Belfast and uh, Londonderry, which Catholics only call Derry, Catholics and Protestants still live in different parts of the city, separated by meter-high walls and fences, the so-called peace walls. Even, even kindergartens and schools are separated by denomination. Days before the president's visit, the police in Northern Ireland were on alert. A Catholic Republican group rioted in Derry on Monday. A police car was set on fire and stones, bottles and Molotov cocktails were thrown at police cars while they were on duty in a cemetery. The police had previously secured four suspected pipe bombs in the cemetery. According to the police, they had been defused and were being investigated. Northern Ireland has also been suffering from political paralysis for more than a year because of the dispute over the Brexit rules. The Windsor framework concluded by London and Brussels at the end of February to settle the dispute changed nothing. The Protestant Unionist Party, the DUP, is stubborn and demands further concessions. According to the Good Friday Agreement, though, the two largest parties from both denominational camps must agree on forming a government in Northern Ireland. Otherwise, the self-government will remain unable to act. Hardly anyone believes that the US president can bring about an, yeah, let's say, immediate breakthrough. And th those new tensions overshadowed Joe Biden's visit to Northern Ireland. In Belfast, he made it clear how important peace there is for the United States and also for him personally. Joe Biden is the eighth U.S. president to visit Ireland, and like every other, every other U.S. president before him, Biden is confronted with the reality of Northern Ireland politics. The anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement, which was signed on April 10th in 1998 and ended more than 30 years of civil war, is being celebrated these days but it's a kind of muted celebration. In a speech at Ulster University in Belfast, Biden recalled that the peace was hard-earned. At the time, it was not a matter, of course, that there would be peace, and it was a big risk for everyone involved to believe in the peace that had been decided 25 years ago, and success is still evident today. Nevertheless, Biden warned that every generation must fight again for peace. And those peace walls that still separate many residential areas of Catholics and Protestants and the walls of houses in Belfast are painted with the martial insignia of the former terrorist groups. On Monday, as I said, youths attacked a police car with, with firebombs at a demonstration in Derry. And not only that, 
the joint government of Protestants and Catholics envisaged in the Good Friday Agreement does not take place. The largest unionist party, the DUP, which I always call Don't Understand Politics, has been blocking government installment for over a year. They see the regulatory and customs border drawn in the Irish Sea as a result of Brexit and the Northern Ireland Protocol as an illegal separation of Northern Ireland from Great Britain and thus as a violation of the Good Friday Agreement, which is complete BS, by the way. Biden therefore refused a visit to Parliament in Stormont, but called on the parties to resume joint government business. That is important for democracy. This and the peace in Northern Ireland are important for him personally, for the Democrats, the Republicans, all of America. Biden's visit was more of a flying visit than a state visit. Biden stayed in Belfast just for half a day on Wednesday. He had a half-hour talk with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak about future U.S. investment in Northern Ireland. And Biden said hundreds of U.S. companies have already invested in Northern Ireland, employing 30,000 people and waiting to take advantage of Northern Ireland's ideal position in the EU single market and the UK single market. But Sunak was absent from his speech at Ulster University in Belfast. He was represented by Northern Ireland Secretary Chris Heaton Harris, and there was no joint press conference. On Wednesday afternoon, Biden left for the Republic of Ireland, where he will stay until today. There, he was welcomed in Dublin on Thursday by Irish President Michael D. Higgins and Leo Varadkar, the Taoiseach, so the head of government, of Ireland. Biden addressed the Irish Parliament and was received at a banquet at Dublin Castle in the evening. And today he will visit the places of his maternal ancestors and give a speech there as well. The Catholic Biden describes himself as Irish. One of his ancestors, Owen Finnegan, came to America from Ireland in 1840. Another ancestor, Edward Blewett, followed in 1850. In all, more than 4.5 million Irish left their homes to start a new life in the new world. Life in Ireland was too hard, the famine too terrible, the government and occupation of the country by the British crown too hated. Today, more than 50 million Americans have either Irish roots or Irish relatives. They all made a new life in America, but never forget this island here, Biden said. And even the White House was built by an Irishman. That explains the great interest shown by Americans and their presidents in Irish politics. John F. Kennedy, also of Irish descent, said after visiting Ireland in 1963 that it was the best four days of his life. Kennedy's brother Robert's grandson, Joe Kennedy III, is currently accompanying Biden on his visit. He was appointed U.S. Special Envoy for Northern Ireland by Biden. The Americans, therefore, also intervened when the Civil War in Northern Ireland assumed ever greater proportions. Former US President Ronald Reagan refused to deliver arms to the Northern Irish British Police Force, the Ulster, Royal Ulster Constabulary that Margaret Thatcher had hoped for. In 1983, the US Congress voted for United Ireland, which the British and Unionists in Northern Ireland saw as a direct American interference on the side of the nationalists. Former President Bill Clinton even allowed Sinn Féin Chairman Gary Adams and one of the then IRA leaders Joe Cale to come to America to appeal to sympathizers for their support. However, Adams and Cale were the ones who, at Clinton's urging, agreed to join the peace pro pro uh, process and persuaded the terrorist group IRA to lay down their arms. This, in turn, helped the Unionists accept the peace agreement, albeit reluctantly. The Good Friday Agreement finally ended 30 years of civil war, as I said, and it had been negotiated with significant help from Clinton and his special envoy, George Mitchell. Clinton and his wife, former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, are expected to attend a ceremony in Belfast next week to mark the anniversary. Nevertheless, tensions remain also because Brexit has reopened the dispute over borders and the self-image of the Northern Irish region. While former American President Donald Trump described Brexit as a triumph and said that the thing with your wall there, your border will work out, well, Biden reacted differently. He rejected Brexit, warned Boris Johnson 
not to endanger the Good Friday Agreement with Brexit and insisted on compliance with the Northern Ireland Protocol, which the Unionists hate. When the Conservative government in London threatened to undermine the Northern Ireland Protocol with the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, there was resistance from Washington. Talks on a future trade deal between the UK and the US have been suspended. The US government threatened that Biden would only come for the anniversary of the Good Friday Agreement if the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill was suspended and the British government reached an agreement with the EU on Northern Ireland. And this is what Sunak did when he announced the Windsor Framework Agreement with the EU in March, which addresses key criticisms of the Unionists and simplifies border checks and trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. In his speech, Biden praised the personal commitment of Sunak and von der Leyen. The agreement helps to protect the peace and the Good Friday Agreement. But the agreement was not enough to persuade the DUP to abandon its government blockade installment. A conversation that Biden wanted to have in Belfast with the leaders of the five largest parties in Northern Ireland to motivate them to resume government business did not take place in this form. Biden welcomed representatives of the parties, but the DUP is still blocking a return to a functioning government. Unionists and many Tory hardliners do not forgive Biden for urging the UK government to back down on the EU. For Sunak, Biden's visit to Northern Ireland is therefore an explosive undertaking. Hence the kind subdued character of the visit. Biden will also not attend the coronation of Charles III on May 6th. No American president has ever appeared at the coronation of a British monarch. After all, no, after all, the Americans and especially the Irish fought hard for independence from the British crown at their time respectively. Biden recalled that the Irish even signed the Declaration of Independence. Biden's wife, First Lady Jill Biden, will be present at the coronation though. But this visit to Ireland and Northern Ireland showed one thing very clearly with this very short meeting between Sunak and Biden. The Americans here once again made it very clear where they are standing on the issue of Northern Ireland and on the Northern Ireland Protocol. And the British government, if they ever want to have a real chance of any trade agreement with the United States, will have to be very careful how they deal with the situation and how they deal with the DUP. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.